My name is Javier Hernandez and my nickname is Chicharito. What's up everybody? My name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So today we're checking out a new mouse from Steel Series, but not just any mouse. This mouse has been inspired by the chameleon lizard to meet the needs of its environment. Steel Series claim this mouse to be the single solution for gamers who play multiple game types such as Battle Royale, FPS, MOBA and RPG games. And yes, we're taking a look at the Rival 5, but is it worth its asking price of $59.99? Let's find out. So don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. It's a great way to support us all here at KitGuru for free. So the mouse comes in a simple box. There's no faffing around here. Just open it and it's there ready and waiting. You don't get any spare mouse feet in the box, which is a slight shame. What seems to be very minor, but something I actually really liked was the fact that the cable was wound in a circle instead of being all bent and twisted. This meant that when I took off the cable ties, the cable didn't have any kinks in it whatsoever, and that was a great first impression. SteelSeries call this their super mesh cable. It's a nice two meters in length and ends in a USB-A and is non-detachable. The cable itself is pretty lightweight and flexible. You can make kinks in it if you bend the cable hard, but these do mostly pull out. The braid is fairly tight and not loose at all. It feels like it will remain nice for quite some time rather than fraying right away. First impressions of the mouse? Well, it screams gamer with its angular, elongated design, and you can see straight away that there are more than one RGB LED zone too. The mass of side buttons on the left-hand side also give it away as being a gaming mouse too, but we'll touch on these later. As soon as I picked up the mouse out of the box, I was surprised by how nice the matte plastic finish felt and how nice the weight was as well. The Rival 5 isn't the lightest gaming mouse on the market, but it's not the heaviest either, coming in at 85 grams. Dimensions wise, the width is 63.35 by 68.15 millimeters front and back. Height wise, it's 28.20 by 42 millimeters front and back. So personally, I like this medium weight bracket as this mouse is trying to cater for various game types at the same time and I'm used to using mice like the Razer Naga which is super heavy. As I mentioned, the feel of the body and shell is very nice. It's a slightly textured matte black plastic and despite the fact that there's no rubber grips or any other textures on the side for grip, I found that the indent on the left for your thumb very comfortable and stable. Throughout my testing, I didn't have any issues with grip slipping at all. The same matte plastic is found throughout the Rival 5's construction, but the shell is made from separate parts. The primary buttons are separate from the main shell, which I like as this firms up their clicks and makes them feel more responsive, and these have slight comfort grooves on them too. The back shell portion is separate from the left and right sides, and the base is separate too. Design-wise, this is a right-handed ergonomic shape, but looking at the mouse from above and below, it's almost symmetrical. Looking at it from any angle or from behind, you can see that it's ergonomic as it slopes down to the right for more comfort. Looking at where the side grips meet the back of the shell, you can see that there's an extra design here too. It almost tucks in at the base, which not only looks cool, but if we flip the mouse over, you can see at the bottom that this design is actually flaring the side grips out slightly, which definitely improves comfort, at least for me. I feel like my hand is much more supported with this slight flare rather than it just being straight up and down. The more time I spend looking at and testing the Rival 5, the more I realize how much time Steel Series spent developing the shape. Even the back palm rest isn't completely rounded. Instead, it's slightly flatter in the middle and then curves off on either side, again adding support for your palm. Underneath the mouse is a simple design with two large glide pads and using them on my Asus ROG Scabbard mouse mat feels great. They glide very well without any resistance. The length and relatively high hump of the mouse makes this extremely comfortable for me and I have medium sized hands. I think this will be good for those with larger hands but those with very very small hands may struggle a little. The mouse is designed for fingertip grip and claw grip. I personally use claw grip when gaming but I did use fingertip grip just for testing's sake. I found both to be exceptionally good. Palm grip is okay, but it does leave your pinky dragging on the mat unless you tuck it up with a hybrid palm slash claw grip style. My go-to
go-to mouse for anything other than MMO playing is the Razer Viper Ultimate. And this hands down blows that mouse out of the water for comfort with my grip style because of those flared size and great palm support. RGB LED wise, there's 10 LED zones and these are placed along both left and right sides as long strips that follow the edges of the side shells, creating a nice diffused RGB look. There's also the SteelSeries logo on the back and the mouse wheel also has RGB too. Speaking of the scroll wheel, it's a nice rubber texture that moves with fairly large increments. You can press the scroll wheel in, but not side to side. Pressing it in gives a satisfying click without any pre or post travel, but we'll take a listen to this in our sound test later. Button wise, we have nine programmable buttons. The standard left and right clicks, scroll wheel click, DPI button, and then we have the silver thumb button, forward and back buttons as normal, but then we have something else. Above the forward and back buttons, we have a large switch. So you can rock this up or down to trigger the last two buttons. This switch is large and it's very easy to use because it protrudes nicely at an angle making it easy for your thumb to quickly move to and actuate. Initially, I was concerned that this would be difficult to use quickly on the fly, but that's not the case here because of that protrusion. What I really liked was the fact that all of these side buttons are super clicky and actuate instantly. There's no pre or post travel on any of them. Primary button wise, we have next gen golden micro switches that are IP54 rated. So they'll be okay if splashed lightly and they're rated at 80 million clicks, which is impressive. If we look at the front or the sides of the mouse, you can see there's a fair amount of space between the primary button's shell and the mouse's body. This concerned me as I expected horrendous pre and post travel, but I was wrong. There's a seriously small amount of pre and post travel, but it's not noticeable at all, and I can only feel this travel when actively trying to press as lightly as possible. In use with clear and precise clicks or even rapid clicking, these switches are very responsive and give a satisfying click too. In comparison to the Razer Viper Ultimate, the Rival 5 takes the win here too. The Viper's optical switches are slightly spongy with noticeable pre and post travel. They're also dull sounding too. I would say that the Viper's switches feel like they need less pressure to actuate, whereas the Rival 5 needs a little bit more force to actuate. Here's a sound test for you of the primary buttons, scroll wheel and all the side buttons. After that, I'll compare the Rival 5's primary buttons to the Razer Viper Ultimate's primary buttons. Sensor-wise, we have a one-to-one -one custom tracking sensor co-designed by SteelSeries and PixArt called the True Move Air Sensor. This has a very high 18,000 maximum DPI, but there's no way I would use mice at those speeds. Personally, I stick to around 1,200 to 4,500, and this sensor can at least cater to my needs. It has a great 400 IPS tracking and 40G acceleration too. It also has tilt tracking too to eliminate unwanted to tracking in certain situations, and SteelSeries claim that this sensor is three times more accurate for mouse movements than competitors. Now this sounds like marketing talk to me, but first off I tried a lift-off distance test using CDs. There's no lift-off distance adjustments even in the software, and the True Move Air sensor was still reading perfectly fine at one disc height, but stopped reading entirely at two discs height, indicating that it has a medium lift-off distance. This may be a deal breaker for some, but I didn't notice any unwanted tracking even when playing games. 
Comparing the sensor to the Viper Ultimate again by Razer, I didn't see any difference in performance that I could measure based on feel and response. Both are super responsive without any jitter or unwanted tracking at all, but I do want to say though that the Viper Ultimate is a mouse that originally cost £150 at launch and is still around £100 now. To me, that means SteelSeries has done something right with their TrueMove air sensor, considering that this mouse is a new release and is only $59.99. Let's take a look at the software now. Make sure to download the latest version of SteelSeries Engine, check for updates as well. On the left hand side, click the Engine tab and then you'll see the Rival 5. Clicking the Rival 5 opens up a new tab and honestly, I'm a little bit overwhelmed here on first inspection. It's kind of cluttered in my opinion. The Settings tab appears selected first and on the left side we have the Actions displayed. Here you can change your key bindings for the customizable buttons. Click the button that you want to change and this will open up a new tab letting you select keyboard buttons, macros, media buttons and much more. You can also quick record macros and set whether to play the action once, whilst pressed, auto repeat or whilst held. By default the thumb button and switch labelled as buttons 6, 7 and 8 are set to F1, F2 and F3, but of course you can change this. Staying on the left but at the bottom we have configs. These are your profile settings and you can add new ones by clicking on the plus button. On the far right we have the DPI stages that you can change by clicking each. You can set the DPI level, acceleration, deceleration, angle snapping and polling rate as well. Clicking on the illumination tab lets you customise your 10 RGB LED zones for either active RGB effects or reactive effects along with brightness. Overall the software is easy to use and it responds well, it's just my first impressions was that it was a little bit cluttered in its layout. Gaming wise the Rival 5 is excellent, those snappy and accurate switches all around really made my gaming experience enjoyable and the programmable 9 buttons were excellent for playing Call of Duty and my go to MMORPG Elder Scrolls Online. Mapping the buttons was easy in the software and saving new profiles for either FPS, Battle Royale or whatever style of game you're going to play was simple and effective. I'd still advocate a dedicated MMO mouse for MMOs but the Rival 5 held up well and if you're wanting a one size fits all mouse for all types of games then I think the Rival 5 will cater for anything you're planning on playing. Build quality wise I'm impressed here too, there's no flex at all when pressing down on the top or squeezing on the sides hard, no buttons are actuated. When shaken there's no rattle from the scroll wheel either which is nice to see at this mid range price point. In in conclusion, I'm impressed by the Steel Series Rival 5. For me personally, it's one of the most comfortable mid-weight mice I've tried in quite some time. I like the way that Steel Series thought about how to wrap the cable without leading to harsh kinks, and the overall design and aesthetics are great. Build quality is spot on and all nine buttons are clicky and responsive. As a one size fits all mouse aimed at being a jack of all trades rather than being a master of one, I'm impressed by how well this mouse performed across the board. I'd have liked to have seen spare glide pads in the box. I also felt the software was a little cluttered and some may see the medium lift off distance as an issue, but overall, especially for the mid range price point, I think that the Rival 5 is definitely worth the $59.99 asking price. But what do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, smash that like and subscribe button. Make sure you check out our merchandise down below and you can check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. Thanks for watching.